Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Deaconess Ashanti, for setting the atmosphere. You provide the fire, and I'll provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit, and I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Love of God overflow. Permeate o'er my soul. Hallelujah, 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 God. I bless your name this morning. 
giving honor to Yahweh our God, Jesus Christ our Savior, and to the Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you, blessed Trinity, in this place. Because you said where two or three are gathered in your name, that you will be in the midst. So we welcome you this morning. I bring greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Greetings to my pastor, the Reverend Gary L. Coulter, to Lady Coulter, to the diaconate body, and to the ministerial body, and to all servant leaders of Mount Lebanon, including the guests that have joined us. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please turn with me to a very familiar scripture, John 14, 1 to 3. John 14, 1 to 3. And it reads thus, Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, he may be also. This is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Let us pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we look to you on today, Father God. Lord God, we thank you, O God, for being in our lives. We thank you, O God, for your son, Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit, our helper and our advocate. And Father, on today, O oh God, as we have come at this moment in the service, Lord God, where we need to hear from you, Father God, we know, O oh God, that you have given a word, Father God. Lord God, it's not the usual word, O oh God, it's an unusual because it takes me, O oh God, out of my comfort zone. But Father God, I preach this word, O oh God, that you have given me under the authority and the anointing that you have given. And I pray, God, that your people's heart will prepare to hear from you on today. Lord God, bless this word, O oh God, that it may change the life of your people. That we will, O oh God, look, O oh God, to you from whence cometh our help, knowing that all of our help, no matter what it is, O oh God, comes from you. This is our prayer unto you on today, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and say amen and amen. I will be preaching from the topic, death has no power over you. Death has no power over you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as I consider all the killings shown on the news in the past few weeks, for example, the recent shooting at a church in California, killing one person, the shooting of innocent shoppers in Buffalo, killing 10 people, the unnecessary destruction of humanity where thousands are killed as a result of a war between Ukraine and Russia and all the other unnecessary killings in the world, it's scary and can be discouraging even to the believers of Jesus Christ as to what this world has become and is becoming in these last days. The spirit of death is wiping out humanity as evidenced by these wicked acts of killings that we're seeing all around the world. Yet, as believers, we have been chosen by Jehovah God and have been sent by Jesus Christ our Lord to go into the world and spread the good news of Jesus Christ that everyone who believes in him will be saved. Though we might be afraid of encountering the possibility of death for Jesus' sake, we must do that which we have com been commissioned by the Lord to do, even with the threat of death. So what is it about death that scares people, including believers? What I have observed is that the very thought of dying is a conversation that many people, including believers, don't want to have and don't like to engage in. Yet it's necessary because if we start the conversation about death and accept it as part of life, our loved ones and us can be better prepared should death occur. Honestly, most preachers don't preach about the possibility of death and dying, though they preach and teach about other life events. For example, why is it so easy to speak about a birth and so hard to speak 
about death. As believers, why is it that we're prepared for and are joyous, anticipating a birth, and are unprepared and saddened when it comes to death? When Ecclesiastes 7.1 informs us that the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. So why do we see more rejoicing upon hearing of a birth versus hearing of a believer's death? The truth is the possibility of death is frightening, stressful, and is very difficult to accept as an outcome of human's physical end, but we need to embrace it. Revelations 14, 13 informs us that those who die in the Lord are blessed from now on, for we will rest from our labor and our good works will follow us. The point is none of us know when and how we will depart from this world, but what we do know is that we need to be ready for our departure. We need to make our election sure because the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is nearer than we imagine. So let us stop being afraid of death and know that death has no power over us. Jesus has conquered death when he rose from the dead and we too are conquerors through Christ Jesus. As I look at John 13 leading up to the text in John 14, 1 and 2, 3, Jesus himself knowing that his death was near prepared his disciples for his departure from this world. And like with us and our loved ones, it wasn't easy for the disciples to accept that Jesus was about to leave them, but it was necessary that they were prepared for it. In other words, Jesus knew it was beneficial for his disciples to know the importance of preparation for everything, including death, while on their spiritual journey. Listen carefully, brethren, in John 13, 36, after Jesus' disclosure of his impending death, Peter had a question. Peter wanted to know where the Lord Jesus was going after his departure from this world. And that's my question to you this morning. Where are you going after your departure from this world? Are you even preparing for leaving this world? And have you considered where your soul will spend eternity? It's time, brethren, for us to examine ourselves, to assess our readiness to be with the Lord and our readiness to be prepared for his coming and stop being afraid of dying, stop being afraid of death. In response to Peter's question, Jesus, asking Jesus where he was going, Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. I love this because Jesus was assuring Peter that in time to come, even though he's departing, they will be reunited. Jesus is sending us the same message on today as followers of his, that we will join with him at an appointed time. The question is, will we be ready? Peter then asks, but why can't I come now, Lord? And before Jesus could respond, Peter said, I'm ready to die for you. I wonder, did Peter even think before saying what he said, or did he even understood what he said? But it's a thought-provoking question and something to wonder about. How about you? Have you considered and are you willing to die for Christ's sake? What comes to your mind when you think about ministering in a dying world where there's so much evil going on? Are you willing to die for what you believe in? Though Peter had good intentions, like all of us, the Lord knew him and knew he was work in progress. And so Jesus answered and said, die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter, before the cock, or some would say the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. I'm sure like many of us, Peter's mind was made up to follow Jesus 
with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might and to be loyal unto him. But often our actions speak louder than our words. You see, Jesus' prediction was on point. Following Jesus' arrest, Peter denied knowing Jesus to take the heat or attention of himself. However, since Jesus knew Peter's heart, Peter's word was fulfilled when he died for Jesus' sake. You see, brethren, we need to be careful, careful what we say to the Lord. We need to be, made, made, be sure that what we say is what we mean. You see, brethren, Jesus will remember our good intention towards him and will bring it to pass. And if it means dying like Peter or like Stephen who was stoned to death in Jerusalem for his faith, Jesus will be right there with us and through his Holy Spirit will give us peace in the face of death. In the text in John 14, 1 to 3, Jesus was comforting his disciples regarding his impending death and departure from this world. He was also assuring them of his plan to prepare a place for them and return for them. Jesus said unto his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Brethren, as disciples of Jesus Christ, this should give us hope, knowing that for the believer, death is not final. The word says we're sleeping. As Jesus said in John 5, 24, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned from their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. Brethren, we are to comfort one another with these words on today. I remind you that death has no power over us because of Jesus Christ. So stop being afraid of death or even talking about death and do the work of the Lord Jesus as he promised to be with us to the very end. Our prayer should be as Paul the Apostle says in Philippians 1, 20 to 21, we fully expect and hope that we will never be ashamed, but that we will continue to be bold for Christ as we have been in the past. I recall when we first surrendered our lives to God, we were on fire for him. But as the process continued, something changed. Hallelujah. But here Paul is saying, trusting that our lives will bring honor to Christ, whether we live or die. For to us, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better when we die in Christ. As some others said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. We are to know that in death, there is something that awaits us. Hallelujah. Brethren, let us continue to open Jesus Christ and not focus on the things that are going all around us. Yes, death surrounds us, but are we afraid of death, knowing that we have power over death? Don't allow yourselves to be held captive in your minds and even in your homes that you're afraid to go outdoors because you're afraid that you might be killed. But set your houses in order and pray that your faith will not fail under the pressures and temptations of sin and what's going on around us. Let, our live, let us live our lives in a way that's pleasing unto God, one without fear and doubt, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Let us encourage ourselves with these words written in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, as Paul the Apostle wrote, wrote to the disciples at the Thessalonian church. Dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. 
we who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who die. There it is, brethren. Even if you die, you will still meet the Lord. As a matter of fact, you will go before those that are living. Hallelujah, God. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 10, for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself, not by human hands. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please the Lord. I like the other version that says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. I pray on today that all of us will think differently about death and be prepared should it happen that we will not be eternally lost. God has given us his word which is truth to encourage us to be hopeful in these trying times. Don't be intimidated by the thought of death because it has again no power over you. There is coming a day when death will be destroyed forever. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more dying. Hallelujah, God. Again, death will be destroyed forever. Though we shall not all die, we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And as the word of God says, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God, we have been given victory to Christ Jesus. So keep hope alive. I know some of you might not understand this message, but for those who don't understand, there are some songs that will help us to get it today. Some of you are not making the connection because you are still scared about death. But there's a song that we used to sing in the Highland that if you miss me, don't come searching. If you can't find me, then you know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at me, my door. For I'll be gone in the twinkling half and high. And then there's another song that says, what a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, a glorious day that will be. There will be no more sorrows there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there. But forever we will be with the one who died for us. What a day, a glorious day that will be. And then another writer says, when I see Jesus, amen, when I see Jesus, Amen. All of my troubles will be over when I see Jesus. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Death has no power over us. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. The day that will be. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a day that will be. Jesus.
Come on, let's give the Lord another hand of praise. Reverend Rochester, that was a word. My God, I am encouraged, amen, by the word that you preached this morning. What a powerful word. At this time, we're going to turn it back over to Reverend Rochester, and she will give final remarks and benediction. Thank you, Pastor. Um, again, I thank you for the opportunity um, to bring the word on this morning. As I often say, you don't have to share the platform that God has given you, but through your faithfulness unto God, you do share it. And I want you to know that I personally appreciate it. I personally appreciate you, and I personally appreciate you being my father in ministry. To God be the glory for all that he has done in Mount Lebanon, Mount Lebanon, and guests that I've joined on today, I thank you for tuning in. I pray that you take this message on today that death has no power over you. You have power over death. This is not it. We're only sojourners passing through. And with that said, let us pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we come before you on this day, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your word. We thank you, oh God, because your word is alive, Father God. And I feel your spirit moving, Father God, as we speak about having power over death, Father God. Too often, oh God, we cringe when we hear the word death, oh God. Too often as believers, Father God, we fall apart when we hear the word death. But Father God, as of today, God, we will look at death differently, oh God, knowing that there's a brighter life that awaits us, oh God, and we're on our way, oh God, to making heaven our home. So Father, has Peter asked Christ where he is going, Father God, well, God, I pray, oh God, that we will examine what we're doing, oh God, and make sure, oh God, that we do know that when our eyes close, oh God, we know, oh God, that as we sleep and when Christ arrives, we will know whether we're going to be with him forever or whether we're going to hear, depart from me, I know you not. So, Father God, I pray, oh God, that we are encouraged by your word on today. And I pray, God, that you will continue to pour into us your word, that we will see a new thing, oh God, every time we read it. In Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all, henceforth even now and forevermore. To God be the glory. Go in the peace of God. Amen.